Good morning, Pleasant Hill. Uh, thank you for tuning in to worship with us on our second attempt at a live stream worship. Um, though we can't be together in person, uh, we can still unite in the name of the Lord. We can still find ways to learn. We can still find ways to grow. We can still find ways to be challenged by God and to praise God and to, to give back to God the blessings and the praise that he deserves. Uh, we can still, brothers and sisters, work toward our mission of making disciples of Jesus Christ by reaching out, by growing, and by serving. Let these words from Psalm 100 call us to worship. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God. <clears throat> it is he who made us. We are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name for the Lord is good and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. Uh, so thankful to have Zach and Keith and Kenny here with me to help lead you this morning. Uh, many thanks to my lovely wife, Missy, for teaching that great Sunday school lesson for us earlier. If you didn't get a chance to tune in at nine, you can uh, view it on our Facebook page uh, later today or this week. Uh, I really want to encourage our existing Sunday school classes to consider meeting together via the Zoom video conferencing app. The youth have already met twice and uh, they're meeting together again tonight at 530. Uh, it's really easy to meet via Zoom if you have a computer with a webcam or a smartphone or tablet. And this week we're going to post a tutorial video uh, with some instructions, very simple, basic instructions on how to use the Zoom app. Uh, it really is the next best thing to meeting in person. So I want to encourage you and challenge you to consider doing that. And we're still going to offer a live stream worship. But we're still going to offer a live stream Sunday school lesson. But we want to encourage our Sunday school classes to give the Zoom meeting a try. Now, I need to share some words from our bishop, uh, Jonathan Holston, after consulting with our state leadership uh, and the recommendation of uh, the Center for Disease Control, uh, Bishop Holston has called us to suspend public worship and gatherings through the end of April. Um, this is some dis disappointing news uh, for many of us because Easter is just a couple of weeks away. Um, but it's understandable in light of what our country and world are, are going through. So we're going to make the most of things. Uh, we're going to do our best to engage you and offer you meaningful worship and Sunday school lessons. We're uh, interested in any creative ideas you may have to help us in this regard. I'm going to get our church leadership together soon and uh, talk about these things as well. Um, but, uh, we want to stay active in ministry. Uh, we want to be here for you. Uh, we want you to call us. We want to talk with you. We want to um, email with you and, um, and connect with you in, in those ways. Um, some in our church family have uh, asked for a church-wide prayer time. One Sunday school class is already meeting together uh, or already uh, agreed to pause every day at noon uh, to pray and lift up uh, those who are battling the coronavirus, those who are caring for them, uh, the families of those who have passed away, and, and those who are looking for a cure, uh, and for the rest of us to do our part in limiting the spread of this terrible disease. So join with us each day at noon. Just, just pause, pray. Uh, thank God, ask for God's blessing and, and providence uh, through this situation. If you want to email your prayer requests, you can do so to Diane Jordan at djordan at pleasanthillmethodist.org. We want to continue supporting the Bel Air Food Pantry as uh, they are uh, meeting many of the needs of families uh, in our community. Uh, they could certainly use donations of canned meats, canned pasta, breakfast bars, Pop-Tarts, and peanut butter. Uh, our staff members are going to continue posting on Facebook each day. Uh, be sure to take a look at those. Thanks to so many of you who have viewed those and liked those and, and shared those and commented on those. Um, this, this is our way of being together for now, and we're going to seek to make the most of it. I want to say a special word of congratulations to Case Faulkner and his fiance Maddie on the birth of their daughter, Isabella Blake. Um, they're going to call her Bella, and as you can imagine, Chad and Judy are extremely proud grandparents, and we wish you all the best in, uh, in, in bringing her into the world. Uh, please uh, take a look at our bulletin that we've posted on our website. It has some special announcements that we'd like for you to view. We'll also post those 
on our Facebook page. Um, let us bow our heads uh, briefly for an invocation. Father God, this is your time. Father, we are here to worship you. We are here to honor you and to bless you for who you are and what you've done for us and what you're going to do for us and what you're going to do through us. Father, have your way with this time. May it be a blessing to each of us who participate in it. Through Christ we pray. Amen. And I welcome Keith and Kenny to lead us in a song this morning. Good morning, church. Come on over, Kenny. I want you to get in. Make sure they know who you are, right? Uh, this morning, the songs that I've picked out this morning are, are were picked out on purpose to let you know that no matter what is happening in our world, no matter what is happening in your life, God is good and God is in control. And this morning, we're going to sing together, Great is the Lord. And I hope you will uh, sing with us. Uh, words are not very difficult. If you've got the bulletin, it's there right there for you. Okay, here we go. A little introduction. Great is the Lord, he is holy and just. By his power we trust his love. Great is the Lord, he is faithful and true. By his mercy he proves his love. Great is the Lord and worthy of glory. Great is the Lord and worthy of praise. Great is the Lord, now lift up your voice. Now lift up your voice. sharing in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I want to... Um, 
remind you that our work is continuing on the building foundation. Uh, thank you so much for the commitment cards that so many of you have returned. We're continuing to receive those. Uh, if you need one, let us know. We'll be happy to get one to you uh, and, and record those amounts. So, uh, again, even though we're not able to meet together, we can still meet online. Uh, please continue to consider the church and your giving. Uh, we certainly don't want this pause in our ability to worship together in person to affect our ability to fund important staffing and ministry later in the year. Uh, so there's a lot of ways that you can give, uh, give uh, to the church. You can give online through our church website, uh, PleasantHillMethodist.org. Uh, click on the About tab and scroll down to, the give, uh, to give online and then uh, click on the Donate button. Uh, it's really simple to do that. Uh, we've also posted a link on our Facebook page uh, that will take you straight toward that uh, function on our website. Uh, to make it easier for you. You can also bring your offering to church or mail it to the church office, or you can do what Missy and I do. We have a, a check sent from our bank's online bill pay service. Um, so that's also uh, something very simple that you can do. Uh, we're also in the process of setting up a text to give service. Um, we will uh, let you know uh, when that's available to make the giving of your tithes and offerings as convenient and simple and secure as possible. So, um, thank you so much. And we're going to move now into a time of prayer. The Lord be with you, friends. Let us pray. Father, we thank you, Lord, that in spite of all that's happening, you are still God. In spite of all that's going on in the world and all the changes that we've experienced recently, Father, you are still with us. Nothing has changed at all in that regard. And I pray, God, that as your people, we will be willing to adapt. Um, Lord, I pray as, as your people, we will be willing to be flexible, to um, look for ways you are active in the world, Lord, to look for ways to do ministry, Lord, to look for ways to be your examples in this world so that people, Father, can see you at work in us. Father, we need you. We, we need your spirit. We, we need courage, Father. We need your comfort. Uh, we need your healing. We need your strength. And so, God, help us, Lord, to open up ourselves to you. Father, help us to seek you. Uh, Father, uh, help us to be present with you as you are present with us. Father, we thank you that you are a God who stays. You're a God who meets us where we are. Father, you're not a God who, who runs away when we don't measure up to who you are. But Father, you stay and you love us and you forgive us. You continue to sustain us and you continue to bless us when we do not deserve it. Father, thank you. And Father, may we as your people, may we properly represent you in this world so that people can see that you are alive and that you are at work within us. And Father, for a few moments, we pause ourselves and offer up to you our concerns and our joys and our requests. Again, Father, thank you for listening to us. Thank you for blessing us. We humbly lift up these prayers in the name of your Son, our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit and who taught us to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen.
I've been looking forward to sharing this message with you today. It's the uh, fourth installment of five of Lessons from Bonhoeffer. Today, we're going to be looking at Matthew chapter 5, verses 13 through 16. So if you want to turn there uh, on your devices or, or flip there in, in the pages of, of your Bibles, you can do that. Um, I want to continue introducing yourself, I mean, introducing you to Dietrich Bonhoeffer so that over this time we can uh, get to know him and learn as much as possible from him. Bonhoeffer was born on February the 4th, 1906. He was a German theologian, pastor, author, author, activist, professor, and as we talked about last week, even spy agent. Uh, that's so fascinating to me. Uh, Bonhoeffer lived during the terrible time of Nazi Germany and the Holocaust, and he spoke out often and boldly against Hitler, Nazi Germany, and the Holocaust. Um, We've learned that uh, Bonhoeffer did some fascinating things. Um, he was asked to help and help start a new Christian denomination in Germany, even at a, before he was even 30 years old. Um, and um, um, he, uh, until the Nazis censored him and, and forbade him to speak or teach in public, uh, then he was asked to organize and direct an underground seminary to train ministers. Unfortunately, though, it was shut down less than two years after that started. Uh, last week, we talked about how Bonhoeffer actually had the opportunity to leave Germany for the United States to become a professor. But just a short while after uh, getting to the States, he chose to go back to Germany to try to help his people. He, he wrote to a friend, I will have no right to participate in the reconstruction of Christian life in Germany after the war if I do not share in the trials of this time with my people. Friends, that's the type of person that Dietrich Bonhoeffer was. And once, uh, once Bonhoeffer arrived back in Germany, he joined the military intelligence organization known as the Abwehr, uh, and they used him as a, a secret spy agent and ambassador to allies for the German resistance forces. And he was able to find, help uh, a lot of Jewish people find freedom uh, through his involvement with the Abwehr. Uh, Bonhoeffer was aware of various plots on Hitler's life. Um, he approached, though, even the taking of Hitler's life with great humility. He did not justify his actions, but he accepted that he was taking guilt upon himself. He wrote, when a man takes guilt upon himself in responsibility, he imputes his guilt to himself and to no one else. He answers for it. Before other men, though, he may be justified by dire necessity. Before himself, he is acquitted by his conscience, but before God, he hopes only for grace. The blood of martyrs might once again be demanded, but this blood, he wrote, if we really have the courage and loyalty to shed it, will not be innocent. That was Bonhoeffer's take on what he was involved with. Eventually, uh, his resistance elf efforts, mainly his uh, role in rescuing Jews, was discovered. In April of 1943, Bonhoeffer was arrested and taken to, Ke to Tegel prison. Uh, Bonhoeffer never married. Um, he was engaged, though, to Maria von Wedemeyer, uh, the granddaughter of one of his close friends and Finkenwald Seminary supporter. Uh, their engagement had been announced just weeks before he was arrested and taken to prison. I'm sure that devastated him. However, though, uh, Maria's status as his fiance became a very valuable asset to Bonhoeffer and the German resistance movement while he was in prison. It meant that she could visit him and correspond with him. And she was able to take food into Bonhoeffer and the other prisoners. And she was able to smuggle out letters uh, and papers and other messages that Bonhoeffer had written. Bonhoeffer spent uh, nearly two years in prison, corresponding with family and friends, pastoring fellow prisoners and even the guards. He spent time writing and reflecting on the meaning of Christ Jesus for today. Some of his writings were published uh, posthumously in a book entitled Letters and Papers from Prison. He was also working on a, a very large book uh, and he entitled Ethics. It never was finished uh, by Bonhoeffer, but it was published later. Um, you know, uh, what, what man from Scripture does Bonhoeffer remind you of when he when he wrote and ministered, even while in prison? It reminds me of the Apostle Paul. So uh, following the failure of an attempt on Hitler's life in July of 1944, 
There was a discovery of documents that linked Bonhoeffer directly uh, with that conspiracy. And this led to further interrogation and even to a court martial and eventual death sentence in 1945. Bonhoeffer died on April the 9th, 1945, at the age of 39 years old. Even at a young age, he lived an extraordinary life. And his death, which I'll tell you about next week, is a powerful, powerful story. So I hope you'll tune in and, and listen to some more then. But I want to get in now to our scripture lesson from Matthew chapter 5, uh, verses 13 through 16. Jesus is telling his disciples, and friends, this is part of the, the Sermon on the Mount. You are the salt of the earth. But if salt has lost its taste, how can its saltiness be restored? It is no longer good for anything, but is thrown out and trampled, and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A city on a hill cannot be hid. No one, after lighting a lamp, puts it under a bushel basket, but on the lampstand. And it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. You are the salt of the earth. You are the salt of the earth. Salt is a seasoning. It makes food better. I love some mashed potatoes, but who wants to eat mashed potatoes without salt? You know, salt makes them so good. Um, you know, and everywhere Jesus went, he seasoned life. You know, for, for anyone who, who listened to him, he made life better and more enjoyable. You know, think about it. Why, what other reason would crowds gather around Jesus just, just to, to feed on what he said? Jesus seasoned life wherever he went. And it wasn't because his words were so pleasurable. It wasn't because he was so entertaining. It was because of what that he was teaching uh, was good news for them to hear. Uh, God is for you. God forgives you. God's, God welcomes you to turn back to him. You know, and often Jesus had a very challenging message to teach. Uh, he confronted sin and he told people to leave their life of sin. Never said sin was okay. You know, and if, if he told people that if they wanted to follow him, then they must deny themselves and take up their own cross and follow him. Jesus didn't have a feel good message, but it was one that the people needed to hear because it was a message that led people toward God and therefore it seasoned life and made life better. You know, Bonhoeffer makes the observations as Jesus says, you are the salt of the earth. You are the salt of the earth. Disciples, Bonhoeffer says, must not think only of God and of heaven. They have an earthly task as well. You know, now that they are bound exclusively to Jesus Christ, they are told to look at the earth. Look at the earth. You are the salt of the earth. You are to season the earth and make life better. Jesus is entrusting his work to us as his disciples. Jesus has called us to do good things. He's called us to love God first and to love our neighbors. Um, he's called us to point other people to God. Bonhoeffer also makes this other observation. He writes, Jesus said, you are the salt. Jesus does not say, you must be salt or you must be like salt, you know, and it's not for the disciple to decide whether or not he's going to he or she's going to be be the salt for they are so whether they like it or not. They have been made salt by the call that they have received from Jesus. So friends, believers, you are salt. You are salt. Jesus also said you are the light of the world. And now, of course, we are only light because of Jesus's true light. We are mere reflectors of Jesus's light. You know, and, and I love the stars and the, the, the heavens and the, the universe and, and learning a little bit about them. I don't know a whole lot. and I can't understand a whole lot. But I take this to mean when Jesus says you are the light of the world. Jesus is like the sun. His light is illuminating out, uh, giving light to to everyone. Giving, what everyone, uh, giving to everyone what they need. And we, friends, are like the moon. The moon has no light in and of itself. 
uh, but it shines so brightly and it shines so beautifully in the night because the moon is reflecting the light of the sun. You know, and there may be other ways, but I can think of two ways uh, or two times when the moon does not shine brightly in the sky. Number one, during the new moon phase each month when the side of the moon that is uh, facing the sun is, is facing uh, opposite uh, from the earth, facing exactly uh, uh, away from the earth. And you know, the second time is during a lunar eclipse uh, when the earth comes between the moon and the shadow of the earth is cast over the moon. And so, friends, I think Jesus is telling us to be like the moon. Uh, you know, uh, there is a phase each month where where, G, where the moon seems to turn away. It doesn't really turn away from us, but it seems to turn away um, and it retreats toward the sun. It, it looks at the sun, but it never stays that way. It always turns back toward the earth to reflect the light of the sun back toward the world. You know, Jesus did that, too. He would retreat to quiet and solitary places to be with God, to be filled, uh, you know, and nourished by God. But then he would come back to be with the people. You know, we as followers of Christ should be like that. We should take time regularly to turn our faces toward God, to be with God, to let God fill us and bless us and guide us and strengthen us. But we should always turn back toward the people to reflect the light of God toward them. You know, I know, I know I have been blessed by people who have reflected the light of God in my life. And I hope that other people will be blessed through my reflecting God's light to them and through your reflecting of God's light uh, to them. You know, sometimes uh, during a lunar eclipse, uh, the moon lets something come between itself and the sun. The earth comes between the moon and the sun. You know, just like sometimes we allow things to come between us and God. You know, if we allow things to get in the way of our relationship with God. You know, but think about that. The moon doesn't stay there. It doesn't stay in the shadow. Uh, it, it continues on its journey and eventually gets out of that shadow and gets back on uh, reflecting the sun's light toward us. You know, and just like that, we should not linger as God's people when we realize something has come between us and God. We should get back on track so that we can receive God's light for ourselves, but also so that we can reflect that light to others who need the life and the light that Jesus came to bring. I want us to think about some other properties of light. There are more than we can talk about today. But first and foremost, light serves as a guide. You know, that, that's why we have light fixtures in our homes and lamps and flashlights and street lights and, and, uh, and parking lot lights and, and lit up signs. You know, light makes it so much easier to see so that we can know where we need to head, you know, um, uh, but, you know, we realize how much we depend on light when the power goes out. I don't know how many times I've, I've walked into a dark room with the power out and, and it's tried to flip up the, the light switch only to, to, to be reminded that the power's out. You know, we need that light. We, we depend on it so much. In the same way, though, we need the light of Christ. We are dependent upon his life, his light, uh, so that uh, he can show us and guide us. Uh, in the direction where we need to be headed. It reminds me of Psalm 119, 105, of which many of you are probably familiar. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. You know, light also comforts us. It comforts us, especially when it dispels the darkness uh, and enables us to see. You know, we, we put night lights in our homes. We leave uh, various lamps on sometimes uh, through the evening. Uh, my friend Ward and I like to go camping deep into the woods uh, at least once a year, you know, and even the light of a small campfire or, or a flashlight can bring a great amount of comfort when it's pitch black outside in the middle of the forest. Um, you know, we all need the comfort from the assuring light of God. I want to close with, with this statement, and then Keith and Kenny are going to sing another song for us. You know, but people are living in fear because of what's going on with the coronavirus. You know, this, friends, is our opportunity uh, to reflect God's light so that the people of the world can know that there is a God and that God is good and that God is there to bless us and comfort us and lead us, lead us toward everything that is good. Friends, you are the salt of the earth. Friends, you are the light of the world. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen.
right. As um, as I suffer, you see I have on my glasses today. I've been wearing them for about a week now because wonderful pollen is out and it's just uh, it's just terrific. I just love it. Um, all this, and I noticed this morning coming up the road, uh, that the trees are all green again. And um, it reminds me that God is in control and that the seasons are continuing and that, that that wonderful cycle that he set up is still moving on regardless of what else is happening in our world. Yeah. This really is our Father's world. Mm. Let's sing together. This is my Father's world I do my listening ears All nature sings and round me rings The music of the spheres This is my Father's world I rest me Trees of skies and seas, his hand of wonders wrought. This is my father's word. The birds and carols raise, the morning light, the lily white, declare the maker's praise. This is my Father's world. He shines in all the sand. In the rustling grass, I hear him pass. He speaks to me every time. This is my Father's world. Oh, let me Thank you, Kenny. Friends, let's share in this benediction. You are salt and you are light. You are meant to season life and make it good and make life better. You are meant to reflect the perfect light of God that dispels darkness so that it can guide and comfort others. You are salt, you are light. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. God bless you, friends.